Women are abused every single day and at, and at a very alarming rate. Although, of course, the blame rests with the abuser, you must also take some of the responsibility if you decide to stay in a verbally or physically abusive relationship. The minute that these things begin to happen, it is a sign for you to leave. There should be no thought of, what is going to happen to our kids? You will find a way. If you have to go to a shelter or stay with family or friends for the time being, somebody will help you. There's no shame in being abused. And so she was a definite inspiration to me, but for me it was, I've often been um, described as a black hairdresser, the black hairdresser, so okay, that's great, thank you. But I know my issues are coming from a career standpoint, so I appreciate that, um, that thought, but she was definitely an inspiration to me, so therefore I see other women tackling issues and saying words. When you say the vagina, you think, oh my God, you, you cannot say such a thing, you know? Um, people don't accept you speaking about vagina. But when she did that, I said, of course, I can now start to speak about certain things. And um, so she was a definite inspiration to me. Because women are beginning to finally talk about things that bother them. What do you see as some of the main challenges right. that the, the Caribbean, not just Jamaica or Barbados, face in terms of what happened with, with women or gen, gender matters? Um, in terms of that, for me, I think what women are faced with the financial difficulties that are in front of them. You know, when I go to Jamaica and I see a young woman involved with, a, a 20 year old woman involved with a 60 year old man, that bothers me. You know, that really bothers me because then, um, you know, and I've said it on television, it, it, it puts that woman at such a disadvantage. So if you try to get yourself together, go back to school, get a good education, I don't care what you want to be, a doctor, a lawyer, an Indian chief, I don't, it doesn't matter. Get yourself financially on your feet. As well as I always encourage women, I mean I have my children and I love them to death, but if I had a choice that I would have, would have waited until I was more mature, you know, like on my feet financially, um, education wise, I would have had a better, better education to make more money at a certain point to even help them so much more. But education is a big, big problem for us and financial, and we have to tackle those issues. Because you can't buy my love or my affection to any man. That is what you should actually have to say. And the reason I wrote this is because I'll be honest with you. I actually had a gentleman that said to me one time, Sandy, how much money would it be to take, would it be to take care of you per month? Yes. And I said, excuse me. He goes, well, how much is your rent? How much is the car payment? And I said, why would you insult somebody like that? I was so upset. And. Um, because maybe he thought that, listen, I couldn't, I wasn't making enough money, I was working hard, I was trying to, you know, make ends meet. And so he thought that he could perhaps somehow take advantage of me. And to that, I mean, this day I actually constantly called this person and said, listen, I still don't want your money. Um, and I still talked to him, but I just felt that it was not, as I said, it's something that happened to me and it con continuously happened to young girls out there. So money does not rule the world, and oftentimes money is used to control you make you feel less than. Money dictates the quality of life that you have, and without the money you cannot survive. Unfortunately, a lot of times we make less money even though we might do the same quality and quantity of work as a man in the workforce. This then leads you to perhaps marry for stability to ensure that you will live comfortable. Money does not make you happy, so don't even throw it in the towel and settle with a man just because he's financially stable. So don't even set, throw in the towel and settle with someone because he's financially stable. Great if you have a man that makes a lot of money. That's not a problem. I love somebody that who is wealthy and you two have decided to make a life together. However, succumbing to fear and marrying for money while you stir at your dwindling bank account is not the answer. I very vividly remember the tears of one beautiful Persian girl. I remember at the gym where I worked out a few years ago. She was told by her husband that she had to quit working out as he did not see the need for her to do so. She was a stay-at-home mom with four children and with and had no means of income but her husband. She had no choice but to quit as he demanded. I will never forget her eyes the day that he left the, that she left the gym, never to return. I watched as I watched the tears roll from her eyes, which were bright, red and puffy. I vowed never to let that happen to me. Better to be poor and in control of my own life, I thought to myself, than to be unhappy and constantly at the whim of a man. And this is a true story. I used to work out at a gym and this girl would work out together every Wednesday and her husband told her, listen, I don't want you to work out anymore. And I mean, everybody should go to the gym. <laughs>
you know, get it all together. And her husband said no. And she had to stop. And she cried so much walking out of the gym. She had four kids, no job. And here I was trying to make it meet, uh, my ends meet. And I could actually say, yes, I want to go to the gym. And she could not. Um, so your experience has obviously shaped you as to who you are today. And I'm thankful for those things. And I always try to turn my negative into positive. So that's not a problem as to where I am right now. But for the younger women coming up, I encourage them always to make better choices, to also make money for themselves, not to depend on anyone, to get out of an abusive situation if that is happening to them, like what happened to me, to actually go for and still try to live their own life and put themselves first. Like even now I'm here in Barbados in this beautiful country and I'm still thinking about what the children are doing. I can't focus and have fun. Somebody said to me, just ease in on, I think it was Mr. <laughs> and my wonderful, just to have fun with Sandy, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to relax. So, because my focus is always on the children, I'm always worried about the children. So at this stage, I'm finally trying to get that grip um, and be Sandy, be the person that I'm supposed to be. And this is what I talk about in my book. So I really do hope that a lot of people enjoy the book. Um, it has made the number 20 spot in Jamaica right now. It was actually just released uh, last July. I sold over 500 books in Jamaica. Um, I've gotten great reviews. I'm glad that people have an open mind to say, listen, it's not just...